Hi, good evening. Hope you're doing well tonight and that you're able to get out and enjoy this beautiful North Texas weather today with the sun and, and, and the warmer temperatures. It's been a beautiful day. Last night, as we gather together, uh, we're going to do the same thing tonight in terms of being in Ephesians chapter 1. So we looked at Ephesians chapter 1 last night, and, and we looked at, at the idea that, that God's plan, His ultimate focus for history, is to unite all things in Christ Jesus. To unite all things in Christ Jesus. We looked at that in, in verse 10 where He says, and that he has a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. Uh, so that's the ultimate focus of history. So no matter what goes on um, in our lives every day, no matter what event, no matter what happening, no matter what situation, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's tragic, wondrous, all of those things are a part of that plan that ultimate plan that is unfolding before us of redemption. And we saw also that redemption includes our, our not only our salvation, but also the, the restoration of all things, and that all those things that are restored and, and his people that are saved are all united to him in Christ Jesus. He is over all, and all things will be united in him. And so tonight, as we come back to our text in Ephesians, we're going to be considering this point of grasping the present reality of Christian hope. What is the present reality of Christian hope? Last night was a little bit more forward-focused. So what about the present reality? Well, let's talk about that. We're going to look at three major things tonight as we look at our text. And so let's read our text. We're going to start in verse 16 tonight. So if you have your Bible, you can join with me. Verse 16 of Ephesians chapter 1. I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places? far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all and all. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you that we could be together in this way tonight uh, again. And, and I just pray that you'd bless us as we study your word, as we look to it. I ask you to show us hope in today's world with the present reality that we're dealing with. Show us our hope. I pray that in Christ's name. Amen. Now, again, as we read this passage, I want to point out three things tonight that really do help us to have a, a better hope um, as we, no matter what we face, whether it's the crisis today or some issue that's going to come tomorrow, uh, maybe your crisis today is not as bad as this, you know, the global crisis we have, but maybe something personal with you is happening, uh, maybe even in light of this whole thing. And so let's look at uh, verse 19 really quick. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 19, he says, uh, And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us, who believe. So he's been he's been talking about the glorious inheritance, the incredible riches that we're going to get, and he mentions this 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 point here of what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe. So as we think about that, what he is saying here to us as we unfold this passage is he is saying that we have a power in Christ Jesus that is beyond measure. We have a power that is beyond measure. 
Now, if I were to ask you the question, how might you feel today? Might you feel weak? Might you feel in a way like a little bit out of control? Of course we do. We all do. Um, you know, as when we think about we can't go uh, certain places, we can't go buy certain things, um, you know, it, it makes us feel a little bit powerless. It makes us feel weak. It makes us feel like we have limited control. But that's just not the case. And that's what the passage is saying here is, is that no matter what situation we're in, no matter what we're facing here in this world that we live, he has a power toward his people who believe that is of immeasurable greatness. Now, I was thinking about that today. I was thinking about how, you know, we may feel that way. But, um, you know, as, as work has gone on for me, I had a meeting today with the North Texas Presbytery. Um, and the committee that we met in was the, uh, the M&A committee. And I, uh, I made a decision last week since I lead that, 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 that committee that, that we would do that over, you know, over the Zoom and over the Internet. And so um, I was so glad we did because the, one of the first texts I got as we were getting ready to get on it was from a brother in Dallas who said, by the way, I'm going to be jumping on, but I don't know how long I'll be on because I've been diagnosed with COVID-19. And I was thinking, wow, I'm so glad we did this. Um, not only that, once we got on, but also found out that there are four other people at PCPC who have COVID-19, three of which I know very well. And so I, I kept thinking as, as the meeting started, I wonder how they feel. I wonder what, what type of control they feel like they have. I mean, even of their own bodies at this point. And so what the hope is here for us is that Christ has all the power that we need. And that strength, all the strength comes from him. Remember what he said, what John said in John, uh, 1 John, I should say, 4, 4. He said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And we have that resurrection power that's already started with the resurrection of Jesus. It is a power beyond measure. And so trust in that, hold on to that. The second thing we see here this evening is, is this. As we continue on in verse 19, he says, he says after he says, uh, what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe? He says, according to the working of his great might. So according to the working of his great might. This points us to the security that we have in Christ. That, that God is working all things around us, all things in us, uh, to, to, uh, to make us more and more like Jesus. And so by that power and by that working, we have security in Christ. Now you may say, I don't feel secure, and I can understand that. Um, I was just thinking about this this morning. I woke up like normal and I looked at the ceiling and I looked around me and I thought, oh, things look, things seem great. I bet this could be another beautiful day. And then all of a sudden in my mind, I went to, oh yeah, we still have this virus thing to think about. We still have these issues before us. Yes, we do. It kind of felt like Groundhog Day. Maybe you felt that way. Bill Murray waking up, hearing Sonny and Cher sing I Got You, Babe, again and again every morning thinking, oh, no, not again. Well, this too shall pass. It shall pass. Tragedies, uh, crisis, those things always pass. Sometimes it takes a long time. Sometimes it's a deep wound we have to work through, but what we can be secure of is that we are secure in Christ. And that's what Paul's pointing us to here. If you go on in the verse, if you look at it, he says in verse 20, you know, by according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ. There it is. He raised him from the dead. He seated him at the right hand in heavenly places. His name is far above all rule and authority and power and dominion. His name is above every name. Not only in this age, and isn't that the point? It is in this age. And that's why we could say we're secure. But also in the age to come, 
So we have much more to look forward to. So here we have hope in his rule, in his sovereignty, in his security. Trust in him for your present hope. Now, finally, the third thing I want you to see here, and he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things, the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills us all in all. And we see that in verses 22 and 23. And what this points us to is that we are united as his people. We are united in Christ as his people. So think about that just for a moment. This this. This Lord Jesus, who was the creator God, he was the conqueror, the one who conquered death. He, is, he has been ascended into heaven and he sits as the head, the rule, the ruler, I should say, of all things. And then it says to us here in this passage that he is for us and he is to us that we may be filled with his fullness. In other words, we are united in him as his people, we're not alone. You're not alone in, in, in this world in terms of there's a God who is there and you're not alone in this world in terms of we have each other, his body, his people who know him and who love one another and care for one another. And so this evening, as you think about that passage, let it encourage you, let it encourage you that we're all in this together that there's a fierce loyalty that the Lord has for us and us for him, and he's working all things for good that we may know him and be made in his image and ultimately be united to him as all things are. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your goodness and mercy. Be with us tonight as we uh, wrestle with these uh, truths Help us to know that you really, truly are a power beyond measure, that we are secure in your Son, Jesus Christ, and that we are united together as his people. And that is a great hope for us in this present day and time. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I do hope you'll have a good evening and uh, take care.